I'm glad you could join me today. I'm in the book of 2 Chronicles. Before I begin, let me thank you again for listening to this video blog. I, I don't always know who all's listening, but every once in a while someone is able to contact me or share with me that they listen, and I'm grateful for each one who does that. I don't, uh, I don't always look at the statistics that are available on uh, YouTube and Facebook and other places that I might post this because it's not really important to me the volume of people that, uh, that listen. What's important to me is that the Word of God never returns empty. It always accomplishes what He desires and succeeds in the matters for which he sent it. And so, as you listen, as you, as you meditate with me on these particular passages of Scripture, I hope that they will be a blessing to you, an encouragement, sometimes maybe even a rebuke to some sort of attitude or sin that may be in our lives, um, because each of us struggles with those at different times. So, as I said, I'm in 2 Chronicles today in chapter 10. Now, this is a passage of scripture that, uh, that we have to understand the history behind it. Solomon had been the king for 40 years after David was the king for 40 years. And Solomon, during the first part of his reign, was faithful to the Lord and as a result built the temple and was prosperous and uh, wise and uh, he, had, he, he had wealth beyond imagination. But as he went into the later years of his life, he fell into idolatry. And that idolatry was something that the Lord had rebuked him for. And he knew that it was wrong. And so, uh, and yet he continued. And by the time that he died, then the Lord had said, I'm sorry, your, your descendants, it's, it's not going to... Uh, uh, because of what you've done, I'm going to cause a split in the kingdom. So under his son Rehoboam, uh, there was a there was the split. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the northern tribes of Israel they were the uh, they were the ones that went with another king by the name of Jeroboam. He was a leader who was an opponent of Solomon, and then later Rehoboam himself. And so. Uh, so this particular passage in 2 Chronicles 10 describes that singular event where the people of the northern kingdom split off and go a different way and the people of the southern kingdom remain true to Rehoboam. They were loyal to David, probably more so even than Solomon. And so they stayed with the southern kingdom because they recognized that Rehoboam was, was a descendant of David and the promise that God had made to Israel and to Judah was that his son would come from there. Now in this particular passage in verse 15, it, it says there that the Lord, uh, or that's, that Rehoboam didn't listen to the voice of the people. And it was a turn of events that God himself was a part of because he was uh, angry with Solomon's idolatry and Rehoboam didn't listen. And so, and so in this particular passage, what I, what I want us to recognize is that there is a sovereignty of God that, that supersedes and overshadows the, the sin that is in our lives. There is a sense in which the consequences of our sins come upon us, but there is also that marvelous hand of God that, that guides and directs and provides, and He is sovereign even when we sin, even when we fail. Now, that's not an excuse for failure, and it's not an excuse for sin. But we need to understand that, that just because we sin and get off the track of what he wants us to do doesn't mean that the world is out of control now. It is still his 
He's still guiding. He's still directing. And we can be confident that as we continue to, to turn back to him, that he will continue to guide us as well. This world is coming to the end that God has intended for us to experience. I don't know when that's going to be. I can't, I can't understand that. All I know is that he's still sovereign, that he's still in control. And even though the world seems out of control by our understanding, or maybe I should say even when the world is out of control by our understanding, He's still in control, and he knows what he's doing, and he will direct the affairs of this world according to his plan. We can take, we can take that to the bank. Father, I ask you to grant to us the grace that we need to follow you faithfully. We recognize that there, is, there are still sins in our lives. We recognize that there are still failures that we experience, and we do experience the consequences of them. But thank you that somehow, some way, you're able to take even the wrath of man and cause it to praise you. You're, e you're able to take our sins and to mold and shape us according to them and speak to us in the midst of them. And I ask that you would do that for your glory for your praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you have a wonderful day now. God bless you.